Hello students, I am back today and today our topic would be comprehensive study of nouns. Okay? Guys, I am Bobby Yadav. I will walk you through this uh, lovely journey through nouns and uh, one thing guys, I would want uh, you to tell me how many of you are scared of grammar? Now, are you scared of grammar? So, hi, so I am seeing so many uh, people. Hello, Nitesh, how are you? Pavan, Hamza. Hello, guys, thank you for joining my, um, joining my uh, session. Now, guys, today I was just asking you a question. How many of you are scared of grammar? Today's session, I want you to overcome that fear and learn grammar with me. I will take you right from the basic, that is from the grassroots level to help you understand the construction of sentences. Okay? So we have Divya, Yugant, uh, we have Bilal, Mansi. Hi guys, nice to see you again. Maruti, Karuna, Shobha, Ashish. Hi Ashish. Uh, all of you, welcome guys. So as I was telling you, I am going to walk you through nouns today. So please don't get scared and uh, be apprehensive about learning grammar because I am going to use the simplest techniques for you to learn the best. Don't worry. Okay, now uh, let's uh, start off. Uh, there are few things I want you to remember guys. First and foremost, please uh, pick up a pen and a paper. And uh, as I mentioned last evening, I would be uh, giving you a lot of rules pertaining to nouns. And nouns being basic grammar, it's very, very important for you to follow these rules diligently okay so i would want you to take down each and every rule and keep it as a ready reference so that when we come to the question section you are able to refer to the rules and apply it automatically without even getting hassled i don't want you to get hassled at all there is another thing i want to say yesterday I had got a request uh, saying that ma'am please speak in Hindi. Ha ha bhai, mujhe bhi aata hai Hindi, aisa nahi hai ki mujhe nahi aata hai Hindi. But, ek cheez aapko yaad rakhna hai ki aap cat exams likhne ja rahe ho. Aur cat, aap likhne ke baad, what is the next step? You have to attend the GD and PI sessions. You have to, uh, you know, go for several interviews, okay? So, for that reason, you need to speak English, guys. Hai na? Hindi mein bolna bohat easy hai, mein bata dungi. Ha, koi koi part agar aapko difficult lage, to definitely I will speak in Hindi, no problem. But, ek cheez aap yaad rakhna, students who are scared of speaking English, I don't want you to get scared of speaking English. Okay, start off, speak. That is the confidence. You should have the confidence to speak. Okay, frame the sentence in your head first and then speak. You will never go wrong. I vouch for it. Okay, so these are the things. Please um, understand them, follow it diligently. Definitely you will learn good English. Okay guys, now let's get back to nouns. What was I talking about? I was talking about proper nouns, right? So proper nouns is the name given to a specific person, place or thing. Right, let's look at an example of proper noun. So Mr. Smith, as I told you, is the name of a specific person. Australia, name of a specific place and then Flipkart, name of a thing. Right. So, okay. Now let's go to count 
nouns. Obviously, what are count nouns? That which can be counted, it's also called countables. Right. Now, uh, let's uh, look at uh, uh, the count nouns. Now, count nouns can be of two types. Uh, one is common noun. The other one is collective noun. So, first, we will look at common nouns. I was just explaining you this part when we broke up. But doesn't matter. I will explain it to you again. So, that there is no confusion at all. Okay, guys. So, common noun is a name give, which shows the uh, commonness or similarity of things. Okay. Um, uh, for example, uh, let's take flowers. Okay. We have so many flowers, isn't it? And the category of flowers, uh, that is a common noun. Okay. And suppose we talk about, say, in flowers, we talk about rose or lily or say, um, um, chrysanthemum, that becomes a proper noun. But when we refer it to as flowers, that the reference is to a category. In the same way, birds, it is the reference is to a category. When you are talking about proper noun, it has to be either a crow or a sparrow or a peacock. In the same way, dogs, dog guys, you name it for me, that becomes a proper noun. Otherwise, the category is called dogs. Same way, vegetables. Clear guys? Now, we go to collective noun. First, uh, let's look at what is a collective noun. Now, a collective noun, um, uh, it, uh, the, um, it refers to a group which is functioning as a single unit. They have a common aim and purpose. Right? So, uh, can, we, uh, uh, can you see the uh, examples of collective nouns here? So, you have a bunch of flowers, a cluster of stars, a gang of robbers, uh, an army of soldiers. These are all collective nouns. Now, guys, time to start the rules. Now, you see how simple I make it for you. Right? Let's go to the next slide. Okay, okay, before we talk about uh, the rules, uh, uh, just let me uh, show you the difference between common nouns and proper nouns. Okay, uh, read the sentences, guys. Read the sentences. Quick, guys, quick, read the sentences. So, we have so many students, uh, Kumar Daicharan. Hi, Archana Kumari, Anita Kumari, Karuna. Hi, guys. Now, look at these two sentences. So, I have to go to the doctor for these persistent headaches. Now, when we are uh, talking about doctor, uh, am I, uh, is it uh, mentioned that which doctor we are going to? No, isn't it? So, this becomes, the reference becomes to a category, right? Let's look at the second sentence. You see, I should see Dr. Morgan for these persistent headaches. Now, if you see, the reference is to a specific doctor whom you want to see. So, this becomes an example of a proper noun. Okay, guys, followed? Right. Now, we will go back to collective nouns. Now, guys. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Vishaka, you are right. Dr. Morgan is a proper noun. Good. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Guys, now collective nouns, I have given you example, right? The default rule of collective noun is that it combines with a singular verb. Uh, just look at these examples, you will find the committee is meeting today. Okay, so committee being a collective noun, combining with the singular verb, so committee is meeting today. Let's look at the second sentence. 
you see the family is driving across the country this summer so the family as a whole they are going on a uh, driving across the country this summer so it combines with a singular verb what is it they are all acting together as a unit got it okay let's go to the next one now comes the exception guys now comes the exception now look at these sentences see you know that english language uh i'll be give a rule and the very next moment there is an exception you should be prepared for that okay uh so look at these sentences the family are each doing a different chore guys just let me take you back to the last slide once so what did we talk of here the um the collective nouns they acting together as a unit now if we see this slide see are the collective nouns acting as a unit here or there is a difference of opinion right see the first one the family are each doing a different chore now in a family as it happens in our family actually see one will be cooking the other will be reading a newspaper some uh, children will be playing so each one is doing the different thing right in such an instance you have to combine the collective noun with a plural verb then the next uh, yeah um, archana ah uh, yes definitely uh, archana hello and i'll definitely tell you about the subscription at the end of the session okay please bear with me till then okay uh, let's look at the second sentence here the committee were divided in their opinion and could not select the team guys if i have to use a singular verb here i could say the committee is meeting today that means all the members are meeting today to do something right but if you look at this sentence the committee were divided in their opinion and could not select the team so they are not acting together as a unit they are divided in their opinion is it clear okay 2 minutes have a look at it and then i will go on to the next slide okay uh, karuna uh, you have a question for me uh, the indian army uh what would be its kind so uh they uh if it is an indian army it is a proper noun it is not a collective noun here okay let's go to the next uh, slide now we come to non count nouns now what does non count nouns mean they are those nouns for which you cannot take the number of you cannot count them right now so the rule with non count noun is non count nouns always combine with a singular verb please look at the examples now water can we count water guys nahi na pani ko kaise gin sakte hain nahi gin sakte hain so water is taken as a single unit so it combines with a singular verb water is required gold is precious so these are non count nouns we are going to see several categories of non count nouns now so that you get a clear idea about how to go about it how to identify a non count noun uh but guys here one more thing uh, again there is an a um, uh, small twist to this see if noun count nouns 
are taken in smaller units then it can be counted so look at the example guys two packets of milk are required now here very very important guys we are not talking of milk per se hum yahan doodh ki baat nahi kar rahe hain hum baat kar rahe hain about two packets of milk now packets is singular or plural it is plural isn't it so you combine it with a plural verb okay guys is it clear samajh mein aa raha hai na i need your answers guys okay now we will come to uh, the types of non count nouns now there are seven types of non count nouns just to give you an idea about uh, the type the uh, types of non count nouns so the first one you have mass nouns mass nouns like sugar salt dust okay these are all mass nouns then you come to material nouns so material nouns like gold copper paper so you remember right all these non count nouns will combine with a singular verb then we can have liquids like oil water milk these are all non count nouns okay uh, so i'm happy uh, you know yugan chandan vishaka mansi you are all able to understand wonderful uh yes parikshit okay now let's go to the next one uh, see the next categories will be gases like oxygen carbon dioxide then you have various other gases right then let's talk about branches of knowledge like history mathematics english why didn't i include english here i should have okay uh let's talk about uh, natural phenomena yeah heat cold thunder they are all uh, non count nouns then you have now guys abstract nouns please pay special attention to this because they refer to something which is very very important and which we cannot see feel or touch but they play a very important role in our lives now if you look at the abstract nouns like happiness sadness fear freedom hatred now these are all abstract nouns what are these emotions right now can we count emotions can we guys no right we cannot count emotions but 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 again a special um uh, request to you please pay attention to this but experiences experiences like joy sorrow disappointment promises threats can be counted okay now you will wonder how can joy be counted right shall i give you an example yeah so Let's take an example. First, ah, uh, say okay. Suppose it's my birthday today, right? I get up in the morning. I get a hug from my parents. So that is my first joy of the day, right? After that, I go to the office. There, my colleagues they cut a cake for me. Second joy. After that, I go back home. There most of is in store i go back home and my siblings my brothers and sisters they throw a party for me now what did i experience three joys in a day so can we count it yes mansi now you know why we can count experiences right now sorrow guys i don't like to count sorrow so we are going to skip there you know that you can count them Let's talk about disappointment. Now, one day, guys, you get up late in the morning. Okay, you go to have a shower, 
and there is no water first disappointment right <laughs> then you hurriedly dress up go to the bus stop you miss the bus second disappointment then you reach uh, your office late and you are punished third disappointment so again you can count disappointments too right in the same way you know promises how many promises we can count promises and threats too right fine now let's go to the next slide oh oh now we come to the rules pertaining to form and spellings guys please pick up your pen and paper and start writing okay i will give you 10 seconds so that you can just quickly grab a pen and a paper uh, and i want you to keep this handy so that you know you are able to uh, answer the questions okay so let's look at this uh, five rules pertaining to form and spellings so certain nouns the first rule is this certain nouns remain the same both singular and plural okay now what are those nouns they are dear sheep offspring aircraft guys you cannot add an s and make them plural they remain the same both singular and plural okay now you uh, see again uh, you have to remember one thing that uh, you say but we say deers but we say sheep see the way we speak is not grammatically correct please keep that in mind okay so if it is one deer it will be 100 deer it will not become 100 deers please quickly make a note of this quickly make a note of this pertaining uh, amansi you would want to know the name of pertaining pertaining um uh, uh is uh, to refer to but i'll go back to the slide and i will just explain the same uh, where uh, where did we have that word say acha seven rules acha okay five rules pertaining to form and referring to these form and spellings okay that's what it is okay uh, are you done with rule 1 okay let's go to rule 2 now please take this down so certain nouns appear singular and they remain singular unless otherwise specified very very important okay guys so what are these words advice information luggage furniture machinery guys you cannot use advises suppose agar if you uh, aapko batana hai ki um, mujhe mere parents ne uh, do ya teen advise diye the like uh, for example uh, hindi i am not that fluent okay so uh, suppose uh, you want to say that uh, your parents have given you more than two advice okay you cannot make it advises you can say that my parents have given me two pieces of advice okay you are not going to use advices in the same way information can be used as i have received bits and pieces of information from somebody but you are not making it informations okay next luggage now this is a common error all of us you know how do we speak we say i have so many luggages with me again guys wrong usage you have to use i have two pieces of luggage 
four pieces of luggage even 10 pieces of luggage but you cannot make it luggages right then we go to a uh, furniture the same way guys uh, furniture also cannot be pluralized and made furnitures okay you can use five items of furniture even machinery five items of machinery five pieces of machinery yes i know you will have a question for me uh, that we do use machineries right now yes machineries is used but when see i can say that the industrial sector has a lot of machineries now here are, is the uh, machinery counted no isn't it if you want to count how many machinery is there then you can't use machineries you have to use two pieces of machinery or items of machinery okay here please take down these let's go to the next one ah uh, yeah mansi you say that can we use some advice again if if you note that in the um rule when i was giving you the rule i said unless otherwise specified okay so under some circumstances yes you can use it right shall we move on to rule number 3 now rule number 3 now certain nouns uh appear plural in form and they remain plural unless otherwise specified again i say unless otherwise specified okay now let's look at these nouns you have pants jeans spectacles scissors binoculars there are many more now guys how do you make out whether it is singular or plural very simple yes uh, you will say ma'am they have s but pants has two legs isn't it right jeans two legs spectacles two hands scissors two hands binoculars two lenses right so they will always combine with a plural verb clear guys quickly make a note of this uh kumar uh, what is your doubt dear okay you can come back to me with the doubt uh, why so i didn't get which one um, what is your question please uh, give uh, what is the doubt you please let me know accordingly i will answer your question okay let's go to the next one okay now there are certain nouns they appear plural in form but they are always singular now what are these nouns news ethics measles billiards fireworks guys now it is not that we have added an s and made it plural isn't it the spelling itself is n e w s can i say i have some new for you <laughs> sounds strange isn't it because the spelling itself has an s right uh so these nouns always combine with a singular verb i uh, i can say news is that uh, that the um, you know the cases of corona is rising day by day i can say ethics is to be followed measles is a deficiency disease billiards is a lovely game fireworks is a pleasure to watch right so these are all the nouns though they uh, they have an s but they are not plurals they are always singular okay quickly have you are you making notes guys are you making notes okay let's go to the next one okay now the rule please know the rule certain nouns they appear singular in form but they are always plural okay now what are these nouns cattle people police public 
media clergy okay now let's take it one by one now cattle guys includes goats it includes sheep it includes cows right so it includes so many categories right so they are always combining with a plural verb people also different categories of people police they have various groups in police also so they combine with a plural verb police are investigating the case same way with public when you come to media guys media is plural because media consists of the um, print media radio television etc if you are referring to one suppose you refer to print media then it combines with a singular verb otherwise if you are referring to media then it combines with a plural verb right uh, okay let's go let's um, uh, look at clergy now clergy are groups of people who are involved in various religious activities in the church okay so all of them are referred to as clergy right clear about this please make a quick note of this then we will proceed to the next section great ah we have special rules and usages another 10 rules guys okay please pay attention shall we start okay the first one plural nouns that refer to specific amount quality length weight etc guys when we are referring to amount quality length weight what are these these are units of measurement right now whenever you have a unit of measurement then it always combines with a singular verb let's look at some examples see you can have 7 miles now miles is a unit of measurement isn't it is a long distance then 5 kg of rice again kg is a unit of measurement is too heavy to carry right 40000 rupees is the fee okay so you see any units of measurement here we have miles we have kg we have rupees i can say some uh, 50 liters of uh, kerosene okay so any units of measurement will combine with a singular verb here yeah, guys just have a look at it before i go on to the next slide let's go to the next one okay now now again a very important rule guys conversion of proper nouns into common nouns now what did i say just let's reflect upon proper noun what did i say proper nouns are names given to specific person or thing right now common nouns is uh, the reference is to the commonness of things but how do you convert proper nouns into common nouns now there are two ways of doing it first you can use proper nouns as plurals just add an s to it If you look at the example, there are no Gandhis in present-day politics. Now, can you see? I have changed Mahatma Gandhi to Gandhis. I have added an S. So I have changed it, changed a proper noun to a common noun. Got it, guys? Clear? Okay. Raju, hi. Purushottam, hi. Oh, uh, is the voice not clear, guys? Okay. Now let's proceed. Now, what is the second rule? By placing an article before the proper noun. So, either you can use the proper noun as a plural, or you can place an article before the proper noun. Right? Look, uh, look at these examples now. John is the Shakespeare of our college. 
right now here what are we doing we are um, uh, telling you that john is as talented as shakespeare so he can be equated to shakespeare as a, as shakespeare of our college right so again you can see how we are changing proper nouns into common nouns let's look at the next example tarun is the tendulkar of our team now again we we are saying that tarun is as good a batsman as tendulkar and he is an asset to our team so again here we are changing proper nouns into common nouns clear about this let's go to the next one guys uh, the usage of one of now you have several usage of one of but uh, here um, i will give you one example there is another usage of one of two that will come in pronouns that we are going to look when we are uh, doing pronouns now look at this one of the best books written in english dash abc now what is it is or are okay guys i want an answer quick one of the best books written in english dash abc okay so here we are talking about one of the best books we are not talking about all of the best books right so one of the best books written in english is abc okay so you don't use r here sometimes you tend to get confused because we have books here but you should always understand that the reference is to one of the best books okay here very good very good most of you are giving me the right answer harsh shravan yugan vishaka shravan um mansi no it is is because we are the reference is to one of the books okay great great going guys thank you nadir hi dinesh hi chandan hi gorav a big hello welcome to the session let's go to the next rule another very important part of nouns possessive case of nouns usage of apostrophe guys just uh, let me get a clarity on this give you an example and make this thing very clear before we proceed with apostrophe okay look at these examples guys you have boy singular which is boy plural is obviously boys now when we talk about singular possessive so what is singular we have boy right and what is singular possessive you have boy apostrophe s and then what about plural possessive we already have boys for plural right so plural possessive becomes b o y s and after that you have the apostrophe yes clear let's go to the next example now you have singular child plural it becomes children a singular possessive so child becomes apostrophe s child and children becomes apostrophe s now i want you to note the difference between the first and the second one guys because here if you look at uh, the plural boys is ending with an s so the apostrophe is placed after s but if you look at children it doesn't end with an s right so we say apostrophe s children here yeah, guys please keep this in mind but about this i'm going to discuss after after two or three slides we are going to discuss this again okay let's go to the next one now when it comes no i don't want you to look at this slide but i'm going to ask you a question uh, what happens uh, when there is a joint possession now suppose i say that um, rita geeta sita meeta they own a house right so uh, 
So all of them own the house, right? Now how are you going to show the possessive case? Are you going to say Sita's, Gita's, Mita's, Nita's house? Yes guys, I am waiting. Okay? Now let's look at this. So whenever there is a joint possession, the last noun takes the apostrophe. Guys, if I say, if you look at this example, if I say Suresh's, Ramesh's, Mahesh's and Keshav's house, that means each one of them, they have a separate house. Right? But if you want to say joint possession, then the last noun takes the uh, uh, possessive case. Okay? So Suresh, Ramesh, Mahesh and Keshav's house. So Keshav takes the apostrophe S. Clear? Great. I see a lot of yes. So all of you. Hi Abhinandan. Great, great. Your answer is right. It is Rita, Sita and Mita's house. Great. Very good Abhinandan. Fine. So you got that right. Let's get it. Let's go to the next Okay, now guys, nouns in apposition. What does apposition mean? Apposition means when you put two things next to each other. That is in apposition. In such cases, the second noun takes the apostrophe. Okay, now let's look at the example. My friend, the lawyer's car was stolen. Now, friend and lawyer, the reference is to the same person, isn't it? It is placed one after next to each other, right? And the reference is also to the same person. So, the second noun takes the apostrophe. See, I'll give you another example. If I say, uh, the, Robert, the author's view. Now, Robert and author is the same person, right? So, we don't say Robert's. And then author's view. We say Robert, the author's view. Got it guys? Clear? Yeah? Very good. Uh, let's, do you want a minute or two just to ponder about it? Good. Okay. We will proceed to the next slide. Okay. We come to compound nouns. Now what is a compound noun? A noun made up of two or more existing words. For example, you have hair cut. That's hair cut. Bed and room makes bedroom. Tooth and paste makes toothpaste. So these are called compound nouns. <clears throat> now I have uh, something very funny to share with you. Uh, a common error made by so many students. Uh, especially when it comes to mother-in-law and father-in-law. Okay, now so, um, you know, I ask them, um, see, so where are you living? So they say that um, I'm living in my father's husband, uh, my husband's father's house. So I say, okay, fine, you put it uh, down in a sentence. Uh, your husband's father is what? Your father-in-law. Now you tell me, where do you live? So uh, they say, uh, I live in my father's-in-law house. Or they say, this is my mother's-in-law jewellery. Sounds strange, isn't it? Now, in our lifetime, do we need um, two father-in-laws or two mother-in-laws, guys? We don't, isn't it? So, guys, father-in-law and mother-in-law, you can never use it as mother's-in-law or father's-in-law. Okay, we are not pursuing Miami here. Right. Clear guys? Okay, now let's look at this example. My brothers in law live in my father in law's house. Now, see, you can use brothers and sisters. Right? You're just using it as plural. If I, I can also say my two brothers in law live in my father-in-law's house. So it is whose house? It is my father-in-law's house. So law will take the apostrophe S. 
Brothers will not take an apostrophe s for the simple reason is that we are just using brother as plural. That's it. Are you clear about this? Am I audible, guys? Uh, Nadir, you say there is no audio. Are you able to hear me? Fine. Let's move on to the next slide. No audio. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Nouns ending in S, E, S, S, S. Place the apostrophe after the noun. Guys, when we were discussing apostrophe boys and children, I told you we are going to look at this again. Now, whenever you have a noun ending with S, E, S and S, S, the apostrophe is always placed after the noun. Now, we, uh, you know about John Keats, right? His name is K-E-A-T-S. Keats. So, if the reference is to Keats poetry, you place the apostrophe after S. Right. In the same way, if you look at princess, it is ending with SS. Right. So, if the reference is to the princess down, again the apostrophe has to be placed after S. Now, let's look at the last one which is James. Now, here the noun is ending with Yes. So here again we place the apostrophe after the S. Here guys, I hope you followed this. Right. Great going. Let's go to the next slide. Designation and titles. Whenever there is a designation and title, possessive case is indicated by the last noun. Now look at this example. The president of India. Now, the president of India is a designation, right? So, the president of India, which is the last noun here, India. So, India takes the apostrophe S. President of India's speech. Let's go to the next one. The chairman. Now, here, uh, the designation is small. So, it's chairman. So, here, obviously, chairman will take the apostrophe. The chairman's visit to our office was a much awaited moment. Yeah guys, are you clear about designation and titles? See if I say the chief minister of Karnataka's visit to our locality. So again, the chief minister of Karnataka is the designation. So Karnataka will take the apostrophe S. Clear yeah, guys? Okay. Let's move on to the last one. I'm sure all of you are very happy. Uh, so finally we have come to the last rule. Okay. Are you making notes guys? Are you making notes? I hope so because you have to give uh, me the correct answers when we go to the questions section. Okay. Now look at these sentences and tell me if it is correct or wrong. Please look at these sentences guys. I want you to identify the error here. Okay, come on. I am waiting for your answer. I, uh, inanimate means something which I don't know. Right? That is a lifeless object. Right. Yo, okay. Kumar Roda is very smart. Instead of taking notes, he is taking screenshots. Awesome. <laughs> great, great. As long as you have these notes with you, I have no issues, guys. Okay. Uh, shall we get back to this? Uh, now, my bike's front tire was punctured. Now, what is the error here? The error is, see, Bike is an inanimate object, isn't it? Can it show possession? It can't. See, it is all we that we say, this is mine, that is mine. Can the bike say, this is my front tire? No, right? So, the bike will not take an apostrophe S. Right? That is the error there. But how to form the sentence? Again, uh, we are going to look at it in the next slide. 
Now let's look at the next one also, the door's lock. Again, I told you door is also an inanimate object. So you cannot use an apostrophe S. Let's look at the correct answer. So how does this center, sentence appear with the correction? The front tire of my bike was punctured. This is the way you are going to frame the sentence. Then the next one, it cannot be the door's lock, it has to be the lock of the door was broken. Okay, great. Let's uh, go to the next. Uh, okay, great guys. So I have, I am done with the uh, rules. I want you to answer the following questions. I'll give you a minute's time. Please read the sentences correctly. We will take one by one. So please read the first sentence and then we will uh, proceed to the next one. Come on guys. Please identify the error. Zayed, hi. Tres Singh, hello. Hi guys. Thank you for joining me. Quickly answer. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for some answers to come in. Okay, you guys, you want me to go slow? Okay, see, I, I am giving you time, isn't it? But I want to discuss all questions uh, that is the reason I am uh, in a little bit of hurry because see we wasted some uh, time in between right so yes so let's look at the first question this is my brother's house and that is my parents house what is the error there is an error guys here so look at parents P A R E N T, parents house. So there should be an ap apostrophe, right? Where should it be? It should be placed after the S. That is the error in the first sentence. Did you get? Very good, Mansi Singh. Great, great going. It will not be P A R E N T apostrophe S. No. Parents itself is P A R E N T S. So the apostrophe will come after parents. Okay. Let's go to the second question. Now I like to cycle to the road's end every day. What is the correction here? Quickly, guys, quickly. I want to discuss all the questions. Yes, I'm waiting for answers. Come on, guys. Very good, Kushi Chauhan. Kudos to you. Uh, I like to cycle to the end of the road every day. Again, road being an inanimate object, it will not take an apostrophe. Great going, great. Okay, let's go to the next question. Now, look at this. It is perhaps not incorrect to say that youth are wasted on young people. Quickly identify the error here. Quick, quick. Roads is wrong guys. It is, I like to cycle to the end of the road every day. Work on the third question guys, quick, quick. We will run short of time. I want to discuss all the questions today. Now, I hope you have your notes ready with you. I, that's why I asked you keep it so that you can refer to it easily. Okay, let's discuss the third one. It is perhaps not incorrect to say that youth. Now, youth is an abstract noun. What did I tell you about abstract noun? Abstract noun is a non-count noun. It combines with a singular verb or a plural verb. Singular, isn't it? So, what is the correction? It is 
perhaps not incorrect to say that youth is wasted on young people okay let's go to the next question mr taylor was elected the president of the organization guys though i didn't discuss articles with you but this is a very general question so i just wanted to discuss this question with you see here uh, when do you use here you have the definite article the right but when do you use definite articles when a specific thing is mentioned right now here we are talking about mr taylor was elected uh, the president of the organization what is the name of the organization we don't have any name it is a very generic statement right so in such cases you don't use the so your sentence will read as mr taylor was elected the president i'm sorry the correction mr taylor was elected president of the organization okay that would be the correction did all of you get it guys great you will not use the definite article the you will not use the president it will be elected president of the organization because the name of the organization is not mentioned suppose otherwise we could read it as mr taylor was elected the president of microsoft if i say that then the is uh, good to use but otherwise you can't use the if it is a generic statement now let's look at this next one mary was very hungry so she ate two cakes oh my god two cakes quickly guys what should be your answer we have another seven questions to go so i want to discuss all the questions president of the organization you don't use the because there is no mention of a proper noun there okay let's discuss this mary was very hungry so she ate two cakes now guys the cake can be 1 kg 2 kg just imagine uh, mary eating two cakes so that's a wrong statement isn't it so it should be she ate two pieces of cakes okay clear about this this is of cake great let's go to the next question now here guys it's a different type of question so in these questions you have to mark the part with the error as your answer okay the part which has the error is your answer let's look at this so uh, he is tagore of our college he writes wonderful poems and short stories now where is the error guys where is the error okay guys i want to answer quickly so what did i tell you about uh, conversion of proper nouns into common nouns how do you do it remember by using an article before the proper noun so what will be the correction here he is the tagore of our college he writes wonderful poems and short stories great harsh said great going very good okay let's go to the next one seven questions uh, now this is something new and i want you to pay special attention to this devotees who visit the st xavier's cathedral at goa cannot but be in awe of the place now let me tell you that this sentence has two errors i want you to identify those two errors okay please look at the sentence carefully 
and there please identify there are two errors here which you have to correct i'll give you another 10 seconds before i give you the answer hurry up okay guys let's discuss this devotees who visit the Saint Xavier's Cathedral. Now guys, here there is a point which you have to remember. Whenever a church or a monument or a university is named after someone, then you don't use the before it. So, it should be devotees who visit Saint Xavier's Cathedral. So, you omit the there. Cathedral at Goa. Is it at Goa or in Goa? In Goa. Cannot be. Always remember in is used before a place. So, what is the correction? Devotees who visit St. Xavier's Cathedral in Goa cannot but be in awe of the place. Here yeah, guys. I hope all of you have got the correction. I don't want you to make the same mistakes again. Let's go to the 8th question. It is not advisable to buy new furniture if there is no place in the house. Again, there are two errors. Can you identify it? Now this I have already discussed. I don't want a wrong answer. Yes, guys, please work on the eighth question. Please spot the yes there quickly, quickly. I want an answer. Very good, Chandan. Yes, it is furniture. That's the first error. There's another error. But this, I do, I'm not too sure whether you are aware of it. But nevertheless, let me, yes, Vishaka, you're right. It is furniture. It is not furniture. And also, if there is no place in the house, okay, the usage of place here is wrong. Grammatically, it is wrong. You should use there is no room in the house. So, your sentence will read as, it is not advisable to buy new furniture if there is no room in the house. Okay? Here yeah, guys, did you get it? Great. Let's go to the next quickly. Now the team could not win the match because it was split into two groups. Now guys, uh, to give you a slight hint, this is pertaining to collective nouns. Now can you remember, can you recollect the rules which I gave you? Okay, now the team is a collective noun. Could not win the ma match because. Now, can you use it here? The reference is to the members of the team, isn't it? So, can the members be referred to as it? No. So, the correction is you cannot use it, you have to use they. And when they are split into two groups, uh, are you going to combine it with a singular verb or a plural verb? Plural verb. So, your sentence will read as the team could not win the match because they were split into two groups. Here guys, so you cannot use it guys because the reference is to the members of the team, isn't it? How can you use it there? Right, let's go to the next question. Mumps are a disease caused by an infection in the respiratory system. Guys, now this one, to give you a hint. Very good, uh, Kumar Uday Charan. Good, great answer, right? Okay. Now, can you give me the answer for the tenth one? Mumps. Though it's ending in S, the very spelling is M-U-M-P-S. Okay? So, will you use, is it a plural? No. It's a name of a disease. 
so it will combine with a singular verb right so mumps is a disease caused by an infection in the respiratory system i gave you this rule right very good kumar uday charan very good right answer let's go to the last two questions now uh 11th one my oldest sister is a professor in the university of california can you identify the error here very good vishaka gorav good please work on the 11th question guys okay i'll just give you another 5 seconds for this we are running out of time today yes guys are you working on the 11th question can you give me what is wrong ah got a great great correct answer correct answer so guys you when you are using um uh, when you are talking about your sister uh, when you are talking of someone within the family you use elder you don't use older you can say uh, my friend arvind is older to me he is outside the family when the reference is to someone who is not within the family you use older but when the reference is to someone within the family you use elder right very good mansi correct answer mili uh, then shishupal correct great great answers great going guys let's look at uh, the last question of the day i lifted the child by his hand now what is the error here can you spot the error here yes guys please spot the error in the 12th question chalo chalo jaldi jaldi Mansi, no. Please read the sentence properly. Harsh, no, no. Please read the sentence correctly. Oh my God! Kumar, Shravan, Chandan, Gaurav, no. You have to read the sentence. properly i'll give you another 50 seconds guys come on correct the error but i like your spirits all of you are actively participating in this love it thank you no my dear preet sandhu that is not the answer No, Shobha. No, <laughs> Milly. No, that's not the right answer. Okay, ten seconds to go. Are you giving me the answer now? No. How can you change the entire sentence? One, uh, you. I will give you certain rules again. that you know you never change the construction of the sentence for this uh, kind of questions okay you cannot rewrite a sentence you just have to correct the error hi anita okay now let me discuss this whenever the reference is to a child or a baby we don't use a gender we don't use his or her So, what will be the correction now? Can you tell me? Can you tell me now? Now I have given you a big hint, yeah. Come on. So, 
The right answer would be I lifted the child by its hand. I T S. Its hand. For a child or a baby, when the reference is to a child or a baby, you never use his or her. You use its. Okay? I lifted the child by its hand. Okay guys, that was the last question of the day. Now, um, I want to share a tip with you. How do you go about learning these rules? Uh, always remember guys, when you are learning these rules, I don't want you to mug it up. I don't want you guys to mug up anything. Ratta nahi manna hai. Okay? What you have to do, I have given you uh, one or two examples for each rule, isn't it? You just make two, three examples on your own based on that. If you do that now, you don't have to mug any rules. You will get it by heart. You will understand the concept so well that automatically when you read a sentence, you will be able to spot the error like this. Okay? That's my tip for the day. Please do not mug or there is no rote learning allowed here. Ratta nahi manna hai. For the last time I am telling you, please make two or three examples on your own based on this and you will get the rules perfectly registered in your brain. Okay guys, fine. It was a great session. Now don't go away. So, uh, you can always, you know, we can have a Telegram app and we can use, so many members can join into the Telegram app and chat. We can do that. Okay. Uh, then, an academy subscription. There was a student who was asking me about the subscription. Now, it is very, very easy. How do you subscribe? You just have to download the an academy app from play store okay and then uh, see uh, when we talk of subscription just a minute guys okay. Okay guys, so um, there's again a technical error, just bear with me for a few seconds. So you just have to download the Unacademy learning app from Play Store and install. Very simple steps. Okay. And then you are ready to go. And after you have installed the app, please <coughs> go to the plus uh, courses. Now here we have the CAT plus course where guys we will be discussing these questions. We are going to have a repository of questions for you to discuss, to prepare for your CAT exam. So please subscribe for the plus course uh, under CAT, right? Then, the next one, um, of course, you know your goal is CAT. So, obviously, you are going to select CAT. Yes, uh, there is a technical glitch today, you can't, can't help it. Okay. Then, uh, let's go to the next one. And you subscribe to the plus course. So, what all are included in the plus course? You have 30 plus hours of live session every day. Just imagine guys, which institute will give you so many hours of study every day. Then, you have structured courses in English as well as Hindi. Then, you have 14 top educators teaching you. Now guys, it's not that you have to
to restrict yourself to one educator you can have access to 14 top educators that's immense guys next new courses are published every month so what are you waiting for just go and get a subscription done right okay then uh, see uh, we will just go through these subscriptions uh, so um, uh, people who are uh, going to write their cat uh, in another six months can uh, you know subscribe for the six months course and it is just uh, a nominal amount of 2333 per month and those students who are in their second year in the second year third year of their uh, graduation for them you can always go for a 24 month subscription and the rate is so very less it's only 875 per month amazing who will give you a cat course in 875 rupees per month this is just amazing so now comes the main thing my code is by L-I-V-E. Just apply this code and you are ready to get a 10% discount on your course. It, isn't it amazing? Okay. Now, uh, other than CAT, you have, you can refer these courses to your friends, relatives. Uh, you have uh, brothers, sisters, you have NEET, you have IIT, JE, you have 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And we cover everything. An academy covers everything. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so what do you have to do? You have to subscribe. Hashtag cat live daily. Right? Please, 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 guys, like, share, and subscribe these videos. Share it as much as possible so that we can help as many students as possible okay